Hello and welcome to Mindset Tips number 13. Just a reminder, this is not a sports psychology course. It is a collection of individual tips, mostly aimed at squash players or maybe other racket sports players, but they could also be used in any performance related activity, whether that's business or music or art or even academic situations. You can see the times that each of those tips start. Um, you can use the YouTube's chapter dividers and and there are even quick jump links in the text description. So if you want to jump to any particular one, you can do that quickly. So let's get started. Tip 49, there are times for aggression and passion, and there are other times for calmness and clarity. And knowing which is which is key to success. Being hyper and being, oh my God, all of the time doesn't work. And being totally calm and clear all of the time doesn't work. You need to balance those things. You maybe need to find some point in the middle between the super aggressive and the super calm, but the chances are that you'll need to move between those at different times. There are times when you're, you know, let's say you're losing 10-4, is that a time for clarity or is that a time for aggression and passion? Well, you have to decide that because the reality is that there's not going to be one solution that fits everybody. Chances are you probably need some passion and aggression. You, you need to just say, come on, I'm just going to have to fight and I'm just going to really work hard. But you might also need that clarity and say, look, I'm not going to win this by hitting seven nicks in a row. I'm going to have to be calm and collected and keep my head clear and choose the right shot. So if you were looking for when to be calm and when to be aggressive, I can't tell you because a lot depends on that. But you need to think about yourself. Are there times when you're too calm? Are there times when you're too aggressive? I can tell you that too often I was too calm and not... Um, aggressive enough in the sense that, did I really want to win? Nah, I don't mind too much. That's not the attitude. That's the wrong attitude. Not if you want to win. You can't go out there and say, just going to have some fun. You can if you're a recreational player, but if you're trying to you know, win matches and win tournaments, you can't do that. So that's tip 49. Recognize that there are times when you need to be aggressive and have all of that passion. And there are times when you just need to be as disconnected as possible and be clear headed times when you need to use your heart to make the decisions and times when you need to use your head to make those decisions. Tip 50. Don't change your game plan if you're winning. Don't change your game plan if you're losing unless you're 100% sure it's not working. Now, I remember a time many, many years ago where I was coaching a young lady and the first two games, she played a particular style of um, game. She was like her normal game. She was aggressive. She was going for winners and she was playing a player who was able to absorb that pressure, who was able to play more defensively. So eventually this particular player listened to me and I said, we need to change the game. We need to become a little more defensive. This girl is not as fit as you. This girl does not actually have as much patience and the quality of her shots are not as good. We need to change this game. And she did, she changed her game and we got to two games all. And then she said to me, Philip, I'm going to go back to my original game because I'm good at that. And I said, please don't do that. Stick with what's working. If it's working, don't change it. No, I'm totally convinced I can beat her with my old style of game. And I said, well, why didn't it work in the first two games? Because I wasn't playing it properly. Okay, she went back on court, she played her original type of game and she lost 3-2. And it's disappointing and she learnt a lesson from that. Now I'm not suggesting that every time a coach comes along or every time I come along and say, this is what you have to do, it's going to be 100% right. But she changed her game plan. She got success from that game plan change, but then she changed it again. If your game plan is working, stick to it. You don't have to be clever. You don't have to be inventive. You don't have to be um, unusual or these strange shots. If it's working, stick to it. Now, if you've got a game plan and you've 
sensibly and carefully thought about it with whoever you work with and you've decided that this is the game plan if you're losing make sure that it's not because of the game plan make sure that suddenly changing the game plan is not necessarily going to work now you might say well that's that's kind of like counterintuitive if it's not working i need to change it and you could argue that, but maybe the game plan hasn't been given enough time. And I know that that's the complete opposite of what I just said about this young lady I was coaching. But what I'm saying here is that if it's the right game plan and you've got confidence in it, stick to it. Changing game plans every game won't work. So contradictory advice here, but if I had to choose one, I would say if you're winning doing something, keep doing it but if you're losing and you're convinced that this is the right game plan stick to it if you're not change it interested to hear your thoughts in the comments about that because i recognize it's a kind of like a, a contradictory piece of advice and it's also a little controversial so tell me what you think tip 51 the next time you walk on court Commit to doing one thing the best you've ever done it. And it doesn't matter what it is, whether it's straight drives, cross courts, boast, volleys, kills, lobs, serves, something. Just say, I am going to do my absolute best. I'm going to focus totally on doing this one thing better than I've ever done it before or with my maximum amount of effort because you will not always be able to play the best that you've ever played. You need to recognize that, but you can always give your maximum. And that's really what this is about. It's choosing one area of your game, and it doesn't have to be particularly a shot. It could be positive thinking or reducing negative thinking. It could be body language. <sighs> Instead of leaning over, stay up straight. Make eye contact with your opponent. Don't show him or her that you're physically suffering, unless it's part of the game plan. Definitely seen this at lots of different levels. <sighs> Pretending to be a little bit tired so your opponent keeps the rallies going. Hmm, suits me, perfect. Anyway, that's like a little bit more Machiavellian, but that's fine. But what we're saying here is that go on court with one very, very specific goal, to do your best at one particular thing. Hopefully the rest of the game will be working as well, but if you've got one mega focus, you might find that other things follow along as well. Give it a try. Tell me in the comments if it worked or if it works. Tip 52, the final tip of the year. We've taken a whole year to get here and here we are. You will never become as good as you could be until you make the conscious decision to commit to working physically and mentally hard. And this is the last tip on purpose. A lot of people want to make the physical effort. They love that physical training. They want to be on court. But then they don't make the um, equivalent effort for the mental aspect of the game, whether that's, you know, mindset tips, you know, about different aspects of the game, whether that's about being more aware of what's happening in the game, whether that's having more determination when you're losing, whether that's remaining positive, reducing negative self-talk, could be, you know, not being so nervous, it could be like a hundred things, but it has to be a conscious decision. You don't suddenly start doing mindful exercises and just well, just see what happens. I mean, you might say, let's see what happens, but you don't suddenly stop. It's a decision. And you've got to say, I want to be the best I can be. Don't necessarily think, I want to be a champion, I want to be a professional, I want to be this level, I want to be that level. Think, I want to be the best I can be under the circumstances that I have. I'm this age. I've got these opportunities. I've only got one hour a day that I can train. Whatever your circumstances, say that I'm going to use the, those circumstances to the best of my ability to become the best I can be under those circumstances. And if you make that decision, then stick with it. Set yourself some goals. There's plenty of you know tips that I've posted about setting goals and seeing things in the right way. And Decide when in one year I'm going to work and I'm going to see how much progress I've made and then I'll reassess how much I want to do. But what I'm asking you to do, maybe this should have been the very first one in some ways, I'm asking you to make the decision 
to commit to working physically, of course, but mentally, definitely. Use the mental aspects because that is a huge difference in how well you perform. That's all I'm going to say. I'm not going to, because I'll ramble on. I know I will. That's it. Make the decision to be the best you can and make it today. Well, thanks for watching the tips. We've reached 52, which means we did a whole year of different tips. I'll probably make a best of video where I take talk maybe about the five top tips that in my opinion. So look out for that. Um, this is a subscription button. If you think my content is useful, please consider subscribing. This is a playlist of all of the other mindset tips. And this is a video that YouTube thinks is a good fit for you based on what you've been watching. And remember, do something every single day to improve your squash. See ya.